All right, I'm so glad that you've joined us tonight for this Oils of Ancient Scripture class. This is one of my very favorite classes to teach because this is the class where my belief began. Um, we often hear and we see essential oils everywhere nowadays. Um, 12 years ago, whenever I started uh, with Young Living, I didn't see or hear much of it. But a lot of people don't realize where and how they came about. And so that's what this um, class will explain to you. Um, what are healing oils of the Bibles? I'm going to give you a little bit of, a, of an introduction um, to them, and then we're going to break it down and we're going to go through each one of these, and I'm going to give you scripture references as well. So what are healing oils? There are healing oils of ancient scripture of all essential and aromatic. Their oils are the vital fluids in the lifeblood of a plant. They contain the essence of the plant and oils healing power connected to their life force of the intelligence and the vibrational energy. So what I like to tell people is when you think of trees and plants, what it does in the tree is what it's going to do whenever it's bottled the purest way. And so if it helps that tree withstand um, strong storms, winds, snowstorms, things like that, it's going to help your limbs be stronger. And when you take the life force, that's why it's so important whenever the distillation process comes and the harvesting process comes to get it at just the right temperature and just the right pressure and just the right time to cut it down and to um, harvest it. Because in the winter time, when it's the coldest in Idaho, that's when they are harvesting all of the spruce trees because those trees have pushed their life force all the way up into the limbs of the tree. And in Mona, Utah, in the, uh, in the spring, whenever the lavender fields are purple and the bees are buzzing everywhere, that's when the lavender is the best to harvest it. And so there's a lot of science behind the um, essential oils and how they're made. And essential oils have been around since the beginning. The story of oils begins with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. God provided their every need by placing them in outdoor environment among flowers, grasses, and vegetarian. We learn that God intended for us to live in this environment and he permeated this with gentle scents of essential oils. And I always go back to that. You know, he gave us the leaves of the tree for our healing, and he gave us the fruit for us to eat. Why are they so special? The word was with God during creation, and God created the plants, vegetation, fruit, and seeds through his word. The word and God's power, the intelligence and the healing, he, he pushed his power and all the intelligence and all the healing into the plants. He gave them life. He gave them power. Just as he gives us life and gives us power. Essential oils are divinely ordained to help God's people heal because he gave these special tools to us. So how do we tap into the fullest potential of essential oils? God intended us to use plants as our medicine. He also intended for us to take responsibility of our own health, know our body and how it works. We should use intelligence that he gave us in finding out how our body works and what is wrong with it. Coupled with prayer and guidance, oils can provide us with a very healthy lifestyle. So ancient scripture proves that oils are, were used. Essential oils were highly esteemed and part of the daily living among Hebrews, Jews, and early Christians, and their Gentile neighbors. It's mentioned 46, in 46 books in the Old Testament and New Testament mentions essential oil plants. Ancient scripture deals, uh, details oils using in healing medicine, food, and gifts for the religious rites. True extent of oils used in Bible times, Bible writers primarily intend Intent was recorded in God's word. 
not detailed use of essential oils, but just the intent of it. Relatively, um, they lack a lot of the detail about the usage due to the understanding that the use was so common. So they didn't really explain how they were using it because everyone back then used them. Modern readers need no explanation for aspirin, right? We just know that aspirin and Tylenol ibuprofen, we know what it's for. So you don't really have to explain what the, what the use is for. So just as ancient people needed no explanation of essential oils. The verses found in the Bible detailing uses of oils are just the tip of the iceberg of the considerable extent to which oils were actually used. So that just gives a little bit of information about what the rest of this class is going to be like. Because um, we are going to talk about quality and the quality that matters and why you should use Young Living essential oils over any other. Young Living goes above and beyond the organic standards to, pro to provide natural products that work. Young Living farms on lands without use of pesticides and hand weeds the fields. I met a man who was 22 years old in Idaho and his job was to weed the tree fields, the tree farm up in the, just for fields and fields of trees at a farm. And I said, you're 22 years old. Nick, why do you want to weed these fields? Like, I mean, you could do all kinds of stuff. You could go to college. You, there's so much. He said, because why not? You get to be with nature. And he said, I talk to the trees. The trees give me life. He said, I'm giving them life by weeding their, their, you know, so there is so much great added detail that goes into our farming sources than you can even imagine. We test essential oils multiple times. We have a million dollar lab that we test that to provide products with the purest and highest quality of chemical constituents. If a batch doesn't meet the high standards, then they will not be bottled up and sold. So if you want to know more about that, if you go to seed2seal.com, that gives you a little bit more of extent of how each bottle comes to you. The great thing about it is we don't have expiration dates on our bottles. We have barcodes on our bottles, but not expiration dates, if you'll notice the barcode. The reason we don't have expiration dates is because do you have expiration dates on the trees that are in your yard and the shrubs and the flowers and plants? No, because it's the purest. It's, it's a living thing. This is as close as you're going to get to a living plant in a bottle. And that's why we don't have, there's no extra additive synthetics or anything. So when you see an essential oil that has expiration dates or it says do not take internally or things like that, that's a red flag to you to go, whoa, this is not pure. And so we love the Seed to Seal Promise because it's a commitment to our family that they have tested it and I know that it's pure. So let's talk a little bit about usage and safety. Um, with this, the oils in the Bible were primarily used aromatically and topically. Putting oils, um, we today put them in a diffuser. I have a diffuser going back here behind me. We put them in a diffuser, but they used them as incense. They would burn them as incense, things like that. Um, they would just inhale them. They would apply them and inhale them. Topically, they applied them um, before they anointed. They massaged them on. They used them um, for um, anointing people, but also anointing and becoming um, closer spiritually. So there's a number of different ways in the Bible that they talk about. Now, internally, we take them internally. I've been taking essential oils internally for 12 years. Um, the only, I go back to seed to seal again, the only way that you want to take them internally is if it's so pure. So when I have that drop of lemon, I know that that's just like a fresh squeezed lemon out of my refrigerator. And so 
that's the promise that we have um, that with taking them internally. It's also the French medicinal way that we use our essential oils. So the first one that I want to cover tonight is aloes and sandalwood. Aloes and sandalwood. And I so wish we had smell-o-vision because I actually have the oils here. And if you were at a class in person, I would pass them around so you could smell it. So instead, I'm going to have to explain to you what it smells like. So there's a warm, woodsy, and slightly sweet air, uh, aroma. I love sandalwood. Sandalwood is one of my favorites um, to use. So in John 19.39, I'll read this scripture for you. And there came also Nicodemus, which at first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound in weight. So what does that tell you about it? If it's a hundred pound in weight of aloes, that was a lot. That was showing that he really, that was, the, that was in John before, whenever they were anointing um, Jesus. Um, and that t tells you his worth. In almost every story in the Bible, when they talk about their anointing Jesus or they're giving oils, it's thousands of dollars that they have spent to anoint this man and to pour on this man. So biblical aloe was an oil imported from India also known as sandalwood. Sandalwood is known for its ability to nurture various systems in the body. It helps oxygenate tissue, including the brain, stimulating for our natural secretion of melatonin. I love to put sandalwood right here between my eyebrows. It's almost like a light switch. Oop, I turn it off. Enabling a good night's rest and preparing bodies for um, burial. So that was the reason that they were bringing it um, they were going to anoint him and they were going to pray over him, but it could have been that they knew that this was also coming. Um, with Sandalwood, Young Living has a Sandalwood farm that we're partners with in Australia. And so the Sandalwood that we have comes from Australia and it's called Sacred Sandalwood whenever you go to order it. Okay, the next one is cassia. I love, love, love cassia. It's a spice made from the bark of an East Asian evergreen tree. But cassia, to me, tastes like cinnamon. And so like a red hot. If you've ever had red hot candy, put a drop on your tongue. Oh, it's great. So in Psalms 45, 8, they say, all thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. Essential oils, including cassia, not only affect our physical bodies, but our emotions as well. Unlike our other four senses, which reach our conscious brains first, our sense of smell is wired directly to our emotional brain, where feelings are caught and feelings, we can, they can change our feelings. So cassia nourishes our body and spirit by stimulating feelings of joy, happiness, and gladness, and en enabling emotional healing. I love that Cassia does that. I, and I totally can see that because it always makes me feel warm and comforted. Cassia reminds me of like baking in the fall and how comfort foods and, and many of the different fall foods and things like that. That's one of my favorites is Cassia. Another one of my favorites, cedarwood. It has a very warm, woodsy aroma that creates a comforting, uplifting experience. In Leviticus 14, 17, it says, And the rest of the oil, cedarwood, hyssop, and olive, that is in his hand, shall the priest put upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the right thumb of his hand, and upon the right, his right toe of his, um, foot, the right big toe. So King Solomon built his palace and temple from unfinished cedar wood as well. This is, in, and that was in 1 Kings 6, 9 through 15. It talks about how he built his palace of cedar wood. This choice provided Solomon an environment which he inhaled molecules of cedar wood oil continuously 
in which he could think clearly and administer wise decisions. Smelling cedarwood has the following effects, clearing our minds of clutter and clarifying your thinking. Well, when you go back to Leviticus, when it talks about the right thumb, the right ear and the right big toe, that's also talking about breaking generational curses and breaking um, things that come upon our body, thoughts, emotions, and different things that we can be held in bondage. And so I believe that whenever we've had a bad day, if we apply cedarwood to our right ear, that helps our body to clean out more of the junk and the clutter from our mind. I also know that cedarwood has some of the highest sesquiterpenes and sesquiterpenes in the process of cleansing and using essential oils to cleanse our cells, sesquiterpenes are the best ones to scrub out the damaged cell and the damaged DNA of that cell that could actually cause that cell to replenish and erase that, that memory of that trauma and cedar wood actually helps to uh, bring healing to the cells of the body because of the sesquiterpenes in the um, cedarwood oil. How do I know that? Because I had trauma in my life and by using cedarwood on my right ear, on my right toe, I actually had a complete healing of the trauma that I had in my life. And to God be the glory for using the tools that he gave us. Um, I go in more detail in the feelings um, kit um, video on my YouTube channel um, with that story. The next one is cypress. We are huge cypress fans at our house. It's fresh and herbace herbaceous aroma. It's, it's cypress. I mean, cy have you ever smelled a cypress tree? That's that clean, fresh smell. We love, love, love cypress. Talks about, in Isaiah, I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and the shatada tree and myrtle and the oil cypress tree. And then it goes on and it says, um, in modern science has shown that inhaling and implying and taking cypress oils internally stimulates the white blood cells. And it helps with the um, beneficial, it's been beneficial in application I'm sorry, hang on a second. I don't think I can say this. Um, I have to stop because it was not my story. So it's very beneficial for people who have had um, a lot of trauma or things like that, um, different um, radiation, things like that, that they've had in their body. So the molecules of cypress oil seem to have an affinity with all the aspects of the cardiovascular system. So this is good for your heart, all right? So including blood vessels of the heart used for cypress. So it helps with arthritis, battling laryngitis, reducing scar tissue and boosting the immune system. So how we use cypress for circulatory system. My oldest son is a type one diabetic. So neuropathy is a huge, huge thing for diabetes. And in order to prevent um, neuropathy in the use of his hands and his feet, we use cypress on the backs of his legs and all the way down to his feet. What I noticed whenever I started doing this is his handwriting improved. And so it showed me that the circulation immediately improved all over in his body. And cypress is, is just, it's a great one for, I like to diffuse it. It's very cleansing whenever you diffuse it and you are cleansing the air. Frankincense, we love frankincense. Um, frankincense is a very earthy and uplifting smell that creates comforting and empowering environment. I love to use frankincense on the crown of my head, five drops every morning. I feel like that whenever I do that and I read God's word, I am empowered and I am taking authority over my life and over um, my being to where I am using God's power to fight my day. So um, Leviticus 2.1, 
And when any offer of meat offering to the Lord is his offering shall be of fine flour, and he shall pour oil upon it and put frankincense therein. Uses for this religious ritual of flavoring food and for all the manner of healing purposes. Frankincense is in the second most frequently mentioned oil of the Bible. Ancient Egyptians had a saying that frankincense could heal everything from a gout to a broken head. Frankincense has been used by various religions and royalty to help with reducing anxiety and concerns, promoting focus in spiritual matters. Today, we use frankincense many of the same ways for empowerment, for empowerment for our spirituality. But also, I love that frankincense is in all of Young Living's skincare products. What does that tell you? It helps with your skin. It helps with wrinkles. It helps with dry skin. It helps with any skin ailments. Frankincense is a phenomenal oil for your skin. But I love frankincense just for the calming effect and for the immune boosting. My youngest child, who is six now, whenever he was born, we anointed him in the hospital with frankincense on his whole body, gave him to God, thanked God for him, and thanked God for blessing our lives with him and with him to raise. And from that day forward, I took a drop of frankincense on my finger and I put it under his tongue every single day. And I did this for about a year to 18 months. And the first time he ever got sick was with a cold at 18 months old. It truly boosted his immune system. And he was born in November. So right at the brink of cold and flu season. So his immune system really stayed very healthy. And I know it was due to the frankincense. Okay, one of the next ones is hyssop. This is one of my favorites for my home. It's a slightly sweet scent in the same family as mint, um, but it is so, so powerful. In Exodus 12, 22, it says, take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel into the two sides of post. So whenever they're talking about that in Exodus, is whenever the death angel was passing. So as that was happening, they're saying, take the branches of the hyssop and put the blood over the doorpost so it would just pass by their house. In the same way, I anoint my home because I do not want things that do not belong in my home to come into our dwelling. I want things that are in my home that do not belong to go out of my home as well. So that is how I use hyssop. I go through my house and I anoint my doors, my windows, our chairs, our bathrooms, our beds, and I just call Jesus to come in. He's welcome there. He's welcome in our home. He is there with us. I just, I just call more angels for protection and, and just call everything that is, is in his existence and the love and the joy. And I go through the fruits of the spirit and I talk about all those and I want those more in our home. And I call them in whenever I'm, and then at the very end, I open the back door and I say, whatever does not belong here needs to leave. And I learned this at a very critical time in my life where we had moved into a home that um, it changed me. The people that lived there before were full of anger, sadness, and hurt each other. And our family started noticing the repercussions of just being in a dwelling of people that were in that dwelling before with bad vibes. <laughs> That's just the, the way that I like to say it. And so when that bad vibe was around, when we came in as our sweet little family, it's like it attached itself to us. And we had to physically anoint ourselves, anoint our home, and we bound that at the root. And, um, and we could tell a huge difference whenever we um, use the hyssop. So animal sacrifices were offered almost daily in the Jewish temples, which could result in a bad odor problem. However, the Jewish congregation regularly supplied the priests with a fresh fragrant herb, which were scattered on the temple floor each morning. And when people walked over them, crushing the leaves and the stems, the fragrant of hyssop, would be released and fresh in the air. 
the scripture above also that I said, Exodus 12, it talks about the Passover. And so hyssop is one that every house should have. Hyssop is also one that you want to use caution with people that are epileptic or tend to have seizures because it is so cleansing to the brain and so stimulating to the brain that it can, if people have a tendency to have seizures, then they could have a seizure just from using hyssop and being around it. It is so, so potent. Okay, next one is myrrh. Recognized for its beautiful properties and grounding aroma. Myrrh is, myrrh is thick, 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 thick. And it is so thick that whenever you get a bottle of myrrh, you need to make sure and put a carrier oil on that bottle. I can't even get the lid off of this one. Because whenever you open myrrh, um, as soon as you open it, you're gonna be able to get it off easy. But it will go back to the harder, it's, it's, in, the, um, free, it's in the tree, it's a tree. Uh, in the tree family, I was gonna say like frankincense, frankincense and myrrh, they're um, similar, but it's a resin and it goes back to the resin. And so a lot of times when you get your, put your lid on, if there's the slightest bit of air, it goes back to that resin form. So if you take it off and put some good olive oil or V6 like we have from Young Living around your lid, then tighten it, that will help it because it will help you get that off. Um, I have, many bottles of myrrh and those that have been opened most of them have plier <laughs> marks on the lid because it is so hard to get off again but it is such a fabulous oil i love myrrh so matthew 2 11 says they saw the young child with mary and his mother who are we talking about jesus they fell down and worshiped him and when they had opened their treasures, they presented him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And a lot of people are often thinking that the gold was in liquid form because the frankincense and the myrrh were in liquid form. So it wasn't necessarily like a gold nugget like we would think. So myrrh is the most frequently mentioned oil in the Bible. It's mentioned 156 times. It's in the first, it is the first oil mentioned in the Old Testament, Genesis 37, 25. And it's the last one to be mentioned in the New Testament in Revelation 18, 13. It was one of the first to be received by Christ's child along with frankincense and the last to be offered as he stood on the cross, Mark 15, 34. Myrrh is great for your skin. Um, when my youngest was born, his umbilical cord, we put myrrh on and the little stump of the umbilical cord came off in three days and it was perfectly healed. Myrrh is great for scars and beautifying your skin. Um, it's, it's so thick. It's like you can almost, um, when my son had um, some stitches right here on his face, uh, once we got them out, we just used that to kind of keep it together. Um, almost like glue. It's almost, it's such a good, thick, thick um, way of using it. Myrtle. Myrtle is our next one. It's a fresh, sweet aroma, and it helps to clear the mind. In Isaiah 55, 13, it says, instead of the thorn shall come up from the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up from the myrtle tree, and it shall be the Lord for, and it shall be the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. So the ancient Jews, the myrtle tree was a symbol of peace and justice, as well as a source for healing oil in celebration of their freedom from Babylon and the captivity of the restoration of the law of Moses. The Jews gathered branches of myrtle in um, Nehemiah 8.15. And in biblical times, myrtle was used for the following reasons purifying from uncleanliness, restoring normal thyroid activity, and a decongestant and respiratory tract for your sinuses. That is what we use myrtle for mostly now, is breathing. Myrtle is in our blends RC and Raven, and it's great for breathing and for respiratory um, and the thyroid. In fact, myrtle and myrrh together on the thyroid are actually fabulous for your thyroid. 
just using those two together. Something else I forgot to mention about myrrh, it can be a, um, an extender. So if you're running low on an oil and you add myrrh to it, it actually helps to extend and thicken that um, other oil to where it, it lasts just a little bit longer. So I like to use my myrrh in that way. Annika, so major component for incense for the churches today is Annika. Now, a lot of times um, I will pass this around the room and people that have been in the healthcare industry for a long time, they recognize this smell of Annika. So let me get to it in just a second. It's kind of got a little vanilla smell to it. So Exodus 30, 34 through 36, uh, 35, and the Lord said unto Moses, take unto thee sweet spices and Annika and galbanum and these sweet spices with pure frankincense and make an incense. While Annika was used in the holy incense of Exodus 30, its most modern use have been extensive. It's a wonderful odor of vanilla because it contains vanillin, um, hal haldehyde, which is also found in the vanilla plant. Annika contains more acids than any other oil, including benzenaic acid. This, is, this oil has been used for providing antiseptic service the body and producing a calming scent. So um, in the healthcare industry years ago, a lot of nurses will smell this and they'll recognize this is what they used to clean the surgical implements and, and the surgical things and to, to sanitize the hospitals. In World War II, the, they used Annika um, out in the battlefields um, whenever they were cleaning their, um, you know, they were, they'd have to do the amputation or things like that. They would have to use this to clean the implements before they would do that because they were using it from patient to patient to patient. And so Annika is a great, um, it's great for cleansing and for antiseptic and cleaning that way. Rose of Sharon or Cystus. It's a honey-like fragrance. It's soothing and uplifting. And this is like a white flower. It's, when, you when we think rose, we think of a red rose, but it's like a white flower with larger leaves on it. So in Song of Solomon 2.1, it says, I am the Rose of Sharon. I am the Lily of the Valley also known as cystus, labidem, and rock rose. Those are other words. It is not traditional. Uh, this is not the traditional sweet smelling flower with the thorny stems that we normally think of. It's a wild bloom that's grown on the plains of Sharon, west of Jerusalem, for thousands of years. The rose of Sharon has proven able to help with healing cuts and bruises and relieve sciatic nerve pain. Rose of Sharon is Great. I, I really like to use it for cuts and, and bruises and things like that and just for um, to help clean the skin. Um, that's whenever I've used it. Okay, so there were two oils that I did not talk about that were in the starter kit. I mean, that were in the kit, um, but here's the kit that you could get. This is the ancient oil of the scripture that you can actually add this to your essential rewards. That covers all of the oils. There are two oils that were often mentioned. Galbanum was one and spikenard was the other. And the reason that Young Living, they used to be in the kit and they had to remove them from the kit was the, um, the source. They could not um, get um, a good farm and a good plant and so they could not sell it because it wasn't a good source. And so they condensed it to these oils Aloes, frankincense, Annika, cassia, cedarwood, cypress, hyssop, rose of Sharon, myrtle, and myrrh. And this is a, an oil kit that you can get. Nowadays, we have a starter kit, which is all of these everyday oils. And like I mentioned, uh, myrtle is in our uh, raven and RC. Raven comes in our starter kit. Um, frankincense is in this starter kit. Lavender is very calming and it helps you to sleep just as sandalwood does. It's in this starter kit. Panaway actually has heliochrism in it. Heliochrism is not one of the oils in our Bible um, class, but it's great for repairing tissue and repairing um, broken bones and things like that. That's how we've used it. Um, a number of different 
oils that we use every day are in this starter kit that you can get to start your wellness journey. So contact the person that invited you to this video and ask them how to order your essential oils.